Hey guys, I'm back with the sixth video and the last video of the video series on our environment class 10 science. And in this video, we are going to cover questions. Yes. So in the last five videos, we have covered the entire theory, concept and everything about our environment. So this video is dedicated to questions and questions are always important. They kind of help you to revise and they also help you to assess how much of the lesson have you really understood. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Choose the right one. Which of the following groups contain only biodegradable items? Grass, flowers, leather. So do you think they are all biodegradable? First of all, let me quickly review. What is biodegradable? Bio means life. Degradable means which can be decomposed. So those things which can be decomposed by some living organisms. So grass, flowers, leather. Do you think leather is biodegradable? No, it is not. The next is grass, wood, plastic. Plastic is again not biodegradable. So this is also not, not right option. Third one, fruit peels, cake, lime juice. So here we have all of them as biodegradable. The last one, cake, wood and grass. So here also we have all of them biodegradable. So we can say that C and D are both biodegradable materials. Which of the following constitute a food chain? What is a food chain? It will actually, it is a series of living organisms which tells us which an, uh, organism eats which organism. So here, grass, wheat, mango. So a food chain is something which will actually tell that this organism should eat this organism and this organism should eat this organism. So is that true here? Do you think that wheat eats grass? No, right? Next is grass, goat, human. So do you think goat eats grass? Yes, it does. Do you think humans eat goat? Well, not all of them, but yeah, some humans, the non-vegetarian one, they do eat goat. So that means this is a food chain. The third one, cow, goat, cow, elephant. So the first part is correct because cow, okay, no, first part, it's goat. It starts with goat. I'm sorry, I thought it is grass. So do you think cow eats goat? No, right? Cow is an herbivorous animal. So this is also not a food chain. The other one is grass, fish and goat. So here again, the fish is not going to eat grass, right? So here B is the correct option. Which of the following are environment friendly practices? What do we mean by environment friendly? Something which will cause less harm to the environment. Carrying cloth bags to put purchases in while shopping. Now, when you go shopping, however, it is these days it is advised that the shopkeepers should not give you plastic bags. However, still some of them do give. So if instead of that, you start carrying a cloth bag, that means a bag made up of a cloth or a paper bag with you. Isn't that more nice and isn't that more environment friendly practice? Yes, of course it is because cloth is biodegradable, whereas plastic is not. Next is switching off unnecessary lights and fans. So what are we actually doing by switching off the unnecessary lights and fans? We are actually saving energy. We are actually stopping unnecessary usage of energy. So we are doing this for the better of our environment. So this is also an environment friendly practice. Walk into school instead of getting your mother to drop you on her scooter. So when you ask your mother to drop you on scooter, so the sc scooter again needs a some amount of fuel right so when you go walking you are actually saving that amount of fuel so you are actually saving some energy resources so that is again environment friendly so the last option is all of the above so definitely here all of the above are correct because all of them are environment friendly practices because they are all done for the betterment of the environment let us now think over some of the questions here 
what will happen if we kill all the organisms in one trophic level? So I'm sure you all remember what is a trophic level. When I was talking about food chain, I told you that each step in a food chain is referred as a trophic level. Let us take this example of food chain. We see here grass. So the plants are eaten by the goat and the goat in turn is eaten by the lion. So each of them, so this plants, this is the goat and this is the lion. So plant is trophic level, one trophic level, goat is another trophic level, lion is another trophic level. So now the question says, if we kill all the organisms in one trophic level. So let us suppose if all animals in one trophic level, say if all the goats are killed, what do you think will happen? If all the goats are killed, so in this particular food chain, there is nobody to eat the plants. So what will happen? So the population of the plant will keep increasing because there is nobody to eat the plants, nobody to consume the plants. And one more thing that will happen is that what will the lion eat? The lion doesn't eat plants. So the lion is dependent on goat for its food, but now there is no goat. So what will happen to the lions? The lions will start serving I mean, the lions will start starving and as a result, the lions will start dying. So even the population of the lion will become zero. So the lions will also become extinct. Right? So what's going to happen here? The population of the organisms in the previous level would increase. So here those animals are plants because the plants were being eaten by the goats. So the plants population would increase. And the organisms in the successive level, so here that organism is lion. So they would start starving and eventually they will die. So it is very important that the population of organisms in each trophic level is maintained. They should neither be very less nor they should be very high. Let us look at the next question. Will the impact of removing all the organisms in a trophic level be different for different trophic levels? Can the organisms of any trophic level be removed without causing any damage to the ecosystem? So I'm sure that after uh, going through the previous question, this question is completely clear to you. Yes, of course the ecosystem will be damaged because all the food chains together is a part of the ecosystem. So once one food chain is affected, that means the ecosystem is also getting affected, right? Now, what will be the impact of removing all organisms in one trophic level? So is this impact going to be different for different trophic levels? Yes, of course, because for the trophic level, which is below that particular trophic level, that is the, for example, in our previous question, as I said, if I take this example, let us suppose this is trophic level 1, which is eaten up by trophic level 2, which in turn is eaten up by trophic level 3. So if I remove all animals in trophic level 2, so the effect of removal of this level 2 will be different for level 1 and level 3, because for level 1, what will happen? This is the previous level, right? So for level 1, their population will increase because there is nobody Nobody is to eat them. For example, if these are the plants and if this is goat and if this is lion, right? Whereas what will be the consequence in level 3? Level 3's population will also start decreasing because they have nothing to eat. So they will starve and eventually they will die. So the impact is different on different top trophic levels. Now the next part is, can the organisms be removed? without causing any damage to the ecosystem. Now all organisms at each trophic level along with the non-living components form the ecosystem. So removal of a trophic level would definitely damage the ecosystem. That's what I told just now, right? Because what is ecosystem? All living organisms plus all non-living things is equal to ecosystem. Now if you are removing one trophic level, that means we are actually disturbing the food chain. That means the food wave is, will also get disturbed. That means the biotic components will get disturbed. So the ecosystem will also get disturbed. Let's look at the next one. What is biological magnification? Will the levels 
of this magnification be different at different levels of the ecosystem now i have already spoken about biological magnification right what is it it is the progressive increase in the concentration of harmful chemicals at each trophic level of a food chain now as we saw let us suppose if there are some harmful chemicals normally these chemicals are non biodegradable that means they will not get decomposed into simpler forms so now if one organism consumed it and if some other organism consumes the same organism the quantity of that chemical keep increasing so the higher the trophic level the higher is the concentration of the harmful chemical it is like that so that means the second part of the question is will the levels be different at different trop levels of the ecosystem yes of course it's going to be different so higher the trophic level greater is the concentration so let us look at an example now here we can see there is an earthworm in the soil okay now let us suppose that this soil let us take the example of a chemical called ddt so it is generally put to improve the quality of soil and all so let us suppose that the concentration of ddt in the soil is 10 particles per million that means for 1 million particle of soil there is one particle of ddt now this earthworm feeds on the soil so let us suppose it feeds on the it eats up the soil so now when it eats up the soil it doesn't eat one particle of soil it is going to eat a lot of particles of soil then it is found that inside this earthworm do you know what was the concentration of ddt it increased the concentration was somewhere around 86 particles per million and now when this earthworm was in turn eaten up by this bird just imagine because this bird is not going to eat just one earthworm one earthworm is not going to be enough for the bird she is going to eat too many earthworms right now and every earthworm is going to have a too much of concentration of this uh, ddt so it was found that inside the bird the concentration increased up to 250 ppm and it is a harmful chemical ddt so if its concentration is too much it is going to be harmful to, to that organism so this concentration becomes so high that the bird can even die so if you look at the food chain here so the bird is at the highest trophic level so the higher is the trophic level the higher is the concentration of the chemical and this increase in the concentration of chemicals is known as biological magnification the next one what are the problems caused by non biodegradable wastes that we generate non biodegradable wastes are those which cannot be broken down into simpler forms so you i am very sure that you know what are the problems accumulation of such wastes pollute water and soil because they are not decomposed into simpler form so they are going to lie there for a long time as it is so we will get some foul smell the water will get polluted with those waste materials the soil will also get polluted non biodegradable wastes occupy a good amount of space so a good amount of space on the earth is occupied by wastes and that is little unacceptable right we have a huge population in our country so some people do not have proper space to build a good house and you have so much of space allotted only for such wastes which cannot be broken down into simpler forms so they are going to lie there as it is for years after years they can be extremely harmful if consumed by a living organism now let us suppose if i talk of plastics we throw plastic bottles just like that we don't bother to throw them off now just imagine the area where these kind of wastes are simply kept just like that in in big cities like delhi or bangalore you would have seen there are some areas where you see only garbage there are very big humps of garbage and they are just dumped there simply like that so the biodegradable ones will get degraded in due course of time but the non biodegradable ones will remain as it is so now let us suppose some animal some insect or some bird if they pick up some plastic material and if they try to eat them what's going to happen it will get choked inside their throat and that organism is going to die because whatever waste material is there that is actually waste that is not going to be of any good to any living organism except the decomposers 
so these wastes if they are consumed by a living organism it can actually kill that organism so these are some of the major problems caused by non biodegradable wastes and that is why we should put a check on the usage of non biodegradable materials if all the waste we generate is biodegradable will this have no impact on the environment so now the next question says that okay now if you say that there are so many disadvantages of using non biodegradable materials now let us suppose if we stop non biodegradable materials completely so now whatever waste is coming out is all biodegradable so in that case is there no harmful effect on the environment is it completely positive effect or e even now there are still some negative effects on the environment well in this case the impact is mostly positive so mostly positive impact on the environment because they would be broken down by decomposers so they are not going to lie as it is there for the entire future after some time it is going to get into the soil because they'll get decomposed by the decomposers they act as a raw material to produce valuable products so they can actually when they are broken down into simpler forms and they can be used for some other purposes which can be good for the environment but there are some negative effects as well for example during the process of decomposition foul smell in the locality which increases the risk of spreading diseases so if the amount of biodegradable waste is very high so it is very obvious that the time which it's to be needs to be taken to decompose that huge amount of waste is also going to be high so during that course of time there will be some foul smell because they are all waste materials actually so because of that there might be some air pollution there will be risk of spreading diseases so all those things might be there but for when you consider the long term effect it is definitely going to be helpful for the environment another one why is damage to the ozone layer a, con a cause for concern what steps are being taken to limit this damage i have we have already talked about this ozone layer a protective layer which saves us from the ultraviolet radiation of the sun so if there is no ozone layer all ultraviolet radiation is going to come to the earth and that is going to cause many diseases like skin cancer they they are going to affect the health of not only living organisms but also plants they are adversely going to affect plants so there will be no life on earth if all the ultraviolet rays start reaching the earth so the reason is ozone layer protects the earth from the harmful ultraviolet radiation of the sun now what are the steps that are being taken to limit this limited production of cfcs what are cfcs chlorofluorocarbons which are generally used uh, in the refrigerator industries or the air conditioner industries now these chlorofluorocarbons produce chlorine at the higher levels of atmosphere and this chlorine that is one molecule of chlorine has the capability to spoil 1 lakh ozone particles so it is extremely harmful for the ozone layer and that is why the production of cfcs has been limited in fact it it has to be banned so it is actually in the process of banning the production of cfcs minimize the usage of pesticides because even pesticides are not good for the ozone layer usage of eco friendly household cleaning products because they also interfere with the existence of ozone layer now i hope you found this video useful if you have a feedback or you want to share your experience with us do let us know in the comment section and i will see you all very soon with a new video with a new topic till then take care bye bye